Hello folks, my name is Barry Kidd and today we've got a short little Photoshop tutorial video on how to pop color in lab mode. Before I go any further, it should be pointed out and it's important to point out that this particular technique does not work with human skin. Occasionally, maybe one out of 20 tries, you'll actually get it to work with human skin where the results are fine. But generally speaking, if you shoot portraiture, models, things of that nature, this is not a technique that you want to use all right it's um, it's gonna it works much the same as using Fujifilm Velvia 50 back in the days of film we you don't want to use Fuji with 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 human subjects it's gonna make them look red and and yellow and well they're just not gonna be happy with you but with that said anything else you want to use this for it's an amazing technique dogs cats <laughs> pets landscapes uh, you know, doorknobs, insects, I don't care. Pretty much anything, anything you want to use this technique for other than human beings, it's going to make your images off the chart. And what's good about it is that it gives it beautiful tones, beautiful contrast, beautiful color, but it doesn't look like the contrast or the saturation was just jacked up in Photoshop just for that effect. It's very natural, very pleasing effect, all right? So with that said, let's shut up and get into the tutorial. All right. Now the first thing I'm actually going to do, I'm going to go up here to image, and I'm going to duplicate it and make a copy of this image. All right. There we go. And after that's said and done, I'm going to go over to image, working on the copy, and go to image mode, and I'm going to choose lab color. All right. Now in lab we can do so much, but before I start, I'm going to make a copy of that layer. Now, you don't have to. You can apply all the changes to the background layer, but this gives us the the, um, the ability to, to reduce opacity for the effect that we want if it's too much for a particular image. All right. Now, once we have our copy made, I'm going to go back over here to image. I'm going to go to apply image. Now, when your apply image uh, dialog box pops up, we're going to keep it simple. We're not going to do a lot of fancy stuff here. We're not going to use the separate channels in lab mode for today or for right now. We're just going to use merged in lab mode. But by default, it's going to choose a blending mode of multiply. We don't want that. Bad. We're going to choose soft light, right? After that's done, press enter or OK. And that will accept those, those alterations to that particular layer. Now we're going to press Control J one more time and make another copy of that layer of the layer that we actually applied the, applied the uh, the changes to, and then we're going to go over here. We're going to go to Image Adjustments. Now you can't see this because it's off the screen, but we are going to go down here to the fourth section, and the first thing in the fourth section right here is going to be Shadows and Highlights. We're going to click that. It's going to bring up our Shadows and Highlights dialog box. Now, this is important. If you're using Photoshop version 5, and I'm assuming version 5.5, I don't use it. I've never used 5.5. You're going to have a default setting on your shadows of 35%. If you're using older versions like CS4 and before, your default setting on the Shadows and Highlights is going to be 50%. Way too much, in my opinion. We don't want to use that. Okay. But for our purposes today, I'm going to back this all the way up to 18. It's a nice, even round number. It works very well for this. So we're going to jack our shadows to 18%. You don't have to change it, but I'm going to move my, my highlights back a little bit. And I'm going to move my highlights back to about 6 or 7. A little bit on the highlights to get you a whole lot. So that, that way, it makes the image, it takes the, the clipping out. But it leaves some specular highlight in the image so that it doesn't look dull or washed out. With that, I'm going to click OK, and we're going to apply those changes to the image. Okay. Now, one reason that I took and wanted to make layers is that, yeah, let's go ahead here. I'm going to make a new group from the layers. Yeah, call it lab. So I'm going to take those two layers that I changed, and I'm going to group them together. and what I want to, if we if we shut that off, this is the original image. This is the image with the color changed to it. You see that? 
if it's too much, if it's way off the chart, then I can just reduce the opacity. Yeah, that worked like a charm. I can reduce the opacity to whatever I want so that we can actually get it to look the way that we want it to. But since that is done, all right, I like the way it looks at 100%. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to alter this back to to a pro photo color color space so that we can merge them together in the other one. So I'm going to go to edit, convert to profile, and I'm simply going to go back to to uh, pro photo, which is the same color space I have before in, in, in the original image. So let's go ahead and I'm going to press OK or enter to apply those changes. And it did. It is set to flatten it here. Now with that done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press Control A, Control C to copy it, and I'm going to go back over here to this particular. This is the original image. Control V will paste that in place. Now, the last thing that I want to do with this particular image, I want to zoom it on up here so that I can see what I'm looking. Yeah, I'm going to zoom it. All right. <laughs> you have to excuse me. Am I? Uh, pretty RAM hungry it's just eating up a whole lot of RAM on me but with that layer made I'm gonna press control J even one more time and I've got a nice generic round uh, generic default sharpening here and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply that to this particular layer and that just adds a little bit of pop to it it takes in you know highlights their edges so that they're nice and sharp and crisp and they're ready to go and we're going to take, and I'm going to look at this eyeball here on the original background layer. I'm going to press Alt on my keyboard and click that. And now you see the original file. Alt and click it one more time. And you see the changes that we've actually made to the image. Control 0. And we'll look at there. There's before and there's after. Gives you beautiful color, beautiful contrast. But as I said before, it's not over the top. It's something like you would have gotten back in the day if you would have used Fuji Velvia 50 or something like that. All right? Gorgeous. Gorgeous color. Gorgeous contrast. But it does not look Photoshopped. It's just so real world and, and it's amazing. Anyway, with that said, I'm going to shut up. Y'all have yourself a happy day and I am out of here. Bye-bye.